So today let us talk about the mechanical skills and the, all of the tools you need to have at least basic mechanical skills. The disclaimer, all of the information I'm going to share on this video are just the results of my personal experience. So if you think about fixing your motorcycle, just please consider going through your motorcycle's manufacturer's user manual so that you don't mess up or you don't break anything on your motorcycle. There are some of the products which I'm going to show in this video and you have to keep in mind that all of these are not sponsored by any of these manufacturer or companies who own this product. All of these are just a result of my personal experience as I have been trying to use them as time goes on and since I have been having this motorcycle. With that said, you have to know this one. To have a basic mechanic skill, you don't have to go to mechanic school. As long as you have a motorcycle, it can be a different model, not no, I mean not necessary to be this model. You can have a different model of your motorcycle. And um, since from the time of owning, as time as you keep using it, there are some of the things you will break down and you will have to figure out by yourself on how to fix them. So that's when I can say basic mechanical skills is start to, 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 to develop. So with that said, you will come to realize that okay, let us assume, for example. This side mirror doesn't work. You will just think, oh, like, what should I do to make sure this side mirror is working okay? Like, is well fixed in, in a nice position. So the extent when I'm riding the motorcycle, I can see on my rear, either my left side or to my right side. So all of these are some of the basic skills you will start to learn as long as you have the motorcycle. With the skills, like, like what to fix on your motorcycle, you will start to realize that what tools you need. And that's where this video is going to cover all of the basic skills and the basic tools needed for basic mechanical skills. I'm going to show you some of the basic tools which I have and which I think you might need to have at least the skills to fix some of the things in your motorcycle. So these tools I'm going to show you guys may vary from, the, from your needs. If you have this kind of motorcycle or even different model, please consider looking for different tools which will be appropriate for you and that's when we can break this video together let us get to this guys so some of the basic tools which i have just right here i'm gonna show you guys so these are a few of my tools which i need to fix to fix some of the problems which happen on my motorcycle i'm gonna start with the with the leftmost, and then he, after I finish all of this, I'm gonna show you guys where and uh, what tools to use. So, on my leftmost side, I have this 24 millimeter spanner, which is two sided, this side and that side, and I have this 22 millimeters. I have 19 millimeter. I have a, I have 18 millimeter spanner. I have also 14 millimeter. I don't have 15 and 17, but I think I will need them. Also, I have 13, I have 12 millimeter, I have 10 millimeter spanner, and I have this Araniki set. I have this screwdriver, I have that toothbrush, which is my uncle's toothbrush. I have a salt tape, I have um, that one as well. I have this white spanner, and I have two types of motorcycle right here. But also, I have that lubricant kit for my chain kit on my motorcycle. So I'm gonna grab one of the spanner and then I'm gonna show you guys. So, these two uh, 24 and 22 millimeter spanner, all of these are used on the rear, on the rear to fix it or to adjust the chain tension to bring it back a little bit or to put it in, on your desired position. If I want to fix the, the chain kit on the rear, or if I want to take out the the wheel, or if I want to change the whole chain kit, there are tools which I need. I will need this one, this one, and I will need 10 millimeters. If not this one, uh, if I want to take out the sprocket cover or the chain cover, which is this one, I have to use this Y spanner. You will come to realize that um, some of the tools here they work together. So if I want to take out the 
if I want to take out the rear tire, I will grab this one, this one, and I will grab this one. Right now here, if I want to adjust these two, I mean the rear wheel, this 24 millimeter fits on this side, which is the left side. This side goes with 24 millimeter spanner. And then this size goes with 22 millimeter spanner. So if we receive this big bolt, this one is a little bit bigger compared to this one on the on the leftmost. So this one goes to 20, 22 millimeter, which is the spanner itself is this one, that one, and uh, to the left side it goes with 24 millimeters. So your motorcycle might have different size of the spanner so just consider which one is the best and then if you want to adjust all of these ears i'm going to use this 10 millimeter spanner you can see i just break on this side there is another spanner here let me show you guys i have this 14 millimeter you can use this one to adjust the break on the back ah. on the back you can see here if i want to adjust the brake drum it goes there and then if I want to adjust the shock absorbers right here, if I try to fit with the 14 millimeter, you will see it doesn't fit. But uh, if I take the 15 millimeter, there it goes. But this one, it fits perfectly 12 millimeter. 12 millimeter fits perfect, as you can see. Some of the tools we're going to see today, they share in most parts of the motorcycle, as you can see. And then. If I want to adjust some of the things, especially um, the engine part to the gearbox part, this one comes in handy in most cases. So if I want to take this uh, sprocket cover, I have to use this one. Whereby this one goes here is 80 millimeter, gonna fit here, but also it's gonna fit here very nicely. If I want to open some of the this the um, gearbox. Cover here, I can use this one as well, just in case when when it's needed. And the, and the most of the parts here have almost the same size of the spanner used. If I want to adjust the steering bar, I have to use this one. I have these spanners, so all of these they fit here. I think here is 14 millimeter, something like that. Let me try. This is the, oh no, actually this is, this is the 14. 13 actually. So with 13 millimeter, there it goes. You will find that uh, this 13 millimeters fits here, but also there are other parts of the motorcycle where it fits as well. Those are the few places we can share and you can see where and what to use in case you are needed. Let us see where we can use this one. So we have this iron key. So this iron key set, you can use this one for adjusting some of the presses. And uh, one of them is on this side of the motorcycle. If you can see here, this is a, this is my, I mean, this is the driver's footrest and this is the passenger's footrest. So let us assume there is something you want to fix. From this side, if you want to open the seat cover of the motorcycle, you will see uh, there is this type of uh, bolts. So these tools comes in handy. So that place and this place as well. And each one has its own size. But if you have this set, I think it will become useful. The other one, we have this one. We have this screwdriver. So. We all know that a screwdriver is a multi-purpose tool. As long as you have a motorcycle, you're gonna use this tool and I think you're gonna need it so much more than ever you ever need it. So the first thing you can see on my left side, this side is for battery cover. When you want to access this one, you just insert your motorcycle key here, twist a little bit, and this cover pops open. But on this side, this is the access for a cleaner. So this one comes in handy. 
for opening on this side. But you also, there are some places, especially on this side, if you want to open this type of bolts. And the other side as well. So those are the few places whereby this type of tools comes in handy and when they are so needed, unlikely when you don't have them. And then the other thing I'm going to share with you guys is this one, which I can say I have I have this toothbrush. It doesn't necessarily to be a new one. It can be a used one. But this one, you will come to use it when you want to clean your chain. If you find your chain is too dirty, you can use, you can take the the petrol or any kind of cleaner and then you can just rub on the motorcycle chain and then it will become neat and clean. But you also, if you if you just change the oil, you're gonna find there is oil filter or there is strainer down there. Once you take out the strainer, you can use this one to clean as well. As you know, there will be some of the engine particles which have just been worn out from the motorcycle. So you're gonna use this one for cleaning. That's where these tools come so useful and they're so handy. But also, you can use these plies, whatever, it depends if you want to hold something. For example, let me show me if I want to take this one out. It will be so easy when I have this one, unlikely when I don't have. This tool as well, you will use this one. But also, I have this, I have this rubber tape. This tape, you can use it, especially if you see here on this horn, you will see all of these wires are out and they are not so protected. So if you want to consider protecting them, this one comes in handy. But also, I have this lubricant toolkit, and most of the time I put this one on a clean oil. If you go to some of the motorcycle mechanics, you will find that they have a tendency of lubricating the chain by the used oil, which is not so good. Why? Oil which has been on this, I mean, which has been used for some time, I mean, a dirty oil. Is not so good ideal to be used as a lubricant. That kind of oil has lost viscosity, but also it has some of the engine particles which will increase the wear and tear of the chain, the front sprocket, and the rear sprocket as well. Personally, I have this one, and if I'm having a little tip like the one which I had a few days ago from Dar es Salaam to Arusha, and from Arusha to Dar es Salaam, I had this one as a lubricant tool, and all of the time I use clean oil. The other thing which I have in front of me is these two types of oil. I have this Total High Performance and I have this Mogus Sentry. You guys, you might be wondering why I have all of these ty two types of, mo of motor oil. I'm going to share with you guys is um, if you will see down here, you will see the oil number. Oil number is just down there, which is 20W50, which is the same as eh? this one, 20 W50. This number is an indication of the oil level or viscosity where the engine is supposed to be used. So this oil we use it on the, on the area or environment whereby it's not too cold, not too hot, it's a moderate area. Tanzania we are located in a climatic area where are not so hot, not so cold. So this type of oil is so convenient. But there is a small difference. If I turn this side, if you go to the ingredients, Let me try to zoom a little bit, if you guys can see. You will see, this one, it says it has a, this is a mineral engine oil for four-stroke engines. It has anti-deposit technology for cleanliness, engine reliability, and reduced the emission. Down there, you will see there is another, there is another instruction. So just focus on the English language. You will see. It has some instructions on how to properly dispose this type of oil once used. So this is the mineral engine oil. And this one here, this one here is another blend which is Moga Sentry 14. I mean, this also used for four, for, I mean, for four stroke type of engine. And it has some of the features which is the trial guard for four stroke motorcycle oil. Uh, and this one is, is, is I mean, is virgin based oil. Let us see on the instruction here what it says. Okay, you will see some of the instructions which it says um, product application, premium quality oil specialized formulated to satisfy the needs for 
tries on its lubrication of engine, wet clutch, and a gearbox of four-stroke motorcycle, just as mine. To ensure durable, protection, and reliable, efficient performance, suitable for all makes, Japanese, Chinese, Indian, as is the one which I have, and the European operating in all riding condition. Normal riding, busy site, traffic of road, and all of those other instructions. This type of oil, some of them are minor obeys, and some of them are synthetic. Only the engine is made from mineral means it is just extracted from the ground and then it processed it, blah, 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 blah. Finally, we get the, the oil. But if it's synthetic, some of them, they are just produced from the, from the plants, then it processed to the industry, or it's just a mixture of plants-based oil and the minor oil, and then you get the mixture of two of them. I think there are some of the video I made the difference between these two types of oil. I think I will check and then I will share the link on the other side of the video, this one. I just had an idea to bring all of these two oils you guys so you can compare. Every motorcycle rider have his or her own test. If you find your oil runs well on mineral oil, please consider doing that. But also, if you find your oil is runs well on synthetic oil, just consider doing that. First of all, you just need a few tools as long as you have a motorcycle, and all of these will be useful. The second one, you will need some of the skills which you, you will acquire as long as you have it. The third one is, what is the type of oil you want to use on your, on your motorcycle. If you have 100 up to 150cc, you can use this type of oil. Even if you have other type of motorcycle with bigger engine, just consider to see what type of oil is convenient for your use. And uh, this one, this one for catching the oil, if you want to change the oil. So you might have your own tool for changing oil or for catching dirty oil. But, but personally, I just find this, this type of, um, of, of tools useful. I just cut this one open. I put down there, I drain all the oil, and then I dispose the oil to the surface to places. You have to consider all of these type of tools when you want to change your motorcycle and the, uh, the basic tools you, you need to have. Doesn't necessarily be this one. Just make sure when you want to change the oil, you have somewhere to to catch the dirty oil and dispose it. That you want to development. I can say those are the few basics. Not all, few basics tools you will need to have at least the basic skills, the basic mechanic skills, as long as you have this type of motorcycle. But if you are going for a trip. You will see there are some of the tools I don't, I don't have, have not included here. Those are, you won't see like how, like, like tools for opening tires, opening tires in case you have a puncher. So far so good, I don't have those type of tools because my tires runs on um, the front one, there is a tube, the rear one, there is a tube as well. If you have tubeless motorcycles, I think I will prepare another kit which will be special for that guys so that you can experience this kind of riding and the other stuff. So far so good guys. I really like to say thank you so much for your time. I know this type of video will be useful to you and if you found this one informative, educational, just do me one favor. Hit that subscribe button and then make sure you share this video with your friends and all the people you love and the guys stay safe on the road. All right guys, after sharing a few tips, tools and skills on the basic mechanical skills this is going to wrap the end of my video but uh, before ending this video this is my check before going for long distance trip like the one which i had in a few days from Dar es Salaam to arusha and from arusha to Dar es Salaam, make sure your motorcycle is well serviced so that um, you go and you come back safely and um, the basic advantage of these basic mechanical skills is that they will save you a purpose in those places where, whereby you can't find a mechanic. If you just have your few tools, not all of them, just few tools, just the basic ones, and if your motorcycle gets a certain problem, the small ones, you can just fix it by yourself and then you proceed with your journey. Once you end or once you are at the safest place, you can just fix your motorcycle well. So those are the, are the best advantage for having some of the basic mechanical skills. But still, uh, if you want to fix the motorcycle by yourself, 
one advice I would like to give you guys uh, is make sure you consult the um, manufacturers use a manual so that you don't damage anything on your motorcycle. I just thought of this because uh, some of the motorcycle manufacturers they sell your motorcycle, they give you a warranty as well. But if you fix something and then you damage it, the warranty become void, which means the warranty won't be of any use on your motorcycle again. But if you are that type of person who like who like to fix things by yourself, you're welcome. And thus, this video served that purpose. So with that said, guys, I would like to say thank you so much for sticking around. And if you found this video so informative, worth sharing, just give it a thumbs up, leave a nice comment, and um, if you have any question or concern, you can just share it in the comment section, and uh, we will make sure we solve that. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I hope to see you on the next one. Bye. Like, comment, and subscribe.